beautiful people. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm trying out the soap frost whistle from a maker called Rio Gomez in Portugal. And this is a brass tunable high D whistle. It was sent to me by bigwhistle.co.uk. If you're a regular viewer on my channel, you'll have heard me talk about Big Whistle before. Basically, it's um, an online whistle store based in the UK and they stock a load of different whistles from really um, impressive whistle makers, I'll say. Um, so it's a great sort of one-stop place to go and browse a whole range of quality whistles that you know you'll be really pleased with when they arrive. They've got a growing collection of different whistle makers as well. And if you are in the UK, obviously, um, whistles that are coming from elsewhere, like the USA or in Europe, um, they usually come with import and duty fees and taxes. You can avoid those if you buy from Big Whistle because um, the whistles that you receive are coming from a UK address rather than from abroad. So it is a great place to shop if you're in the UK. Um, I'll leave a link to it up here on the little i and in the description down below if you want to go check it out. This is where this whistle came from. So if I show you some close-ups of this whistle, you can see we have the, I assume, Dalrin mouthpiece, but it kind of looks like it's been 3D printed. Um, I don't have information on that, unfortunately. But it's sort of short and stumpy, like the uh, Susato mouthpieces, but it's pretty comfortable in the mouth. We have a curved windway here on the whistle as well. And the mouthpiece uh, actually is just the top of the whistle. The blade itself is made from brass, which you can see further down here. The tuning slide is on top of this whistle rather than underneath, so it's an additional wider part here. This is similar to Burke whistles. And the bottom part, or the body, the bore of the whistle, slides in and out of um, this outer ring on top here. You can see that I have it pulled out a little bit here. Um, that's just to tune it as I've been playing it a little bit. Um, you do need to extend whistles like this uh, the more you play to keep them in tune. Now, as we move down the whistle, you can see the holes here. They actually have um, quite a nice finish on them. They're kind of flattened out a little bit top and bottom, which I quite like. They're not overly large. Even the fifth hole, which is usually the largest hole, is pretty small. I mean, obviously it's bigger than the others, but it's pretty small on this whistle. On the back here, we have um, a little signature. There isn't a key labeled on this whistle, which hopefully will be something that the whistle maker adds as they continue to create whistles. Um, but one thing I will say is that the whistle material, the brass itself, is actually really thick. So it's got a nice um, heavy weight to it, which is something I really like in whistles. So now you've seen the details of this whistle, I'll take you through a little bit of how it sounds and we'll go through some tuning and um, decibel tests as well so you get an idea of what this little baby can do. So as you can see from the tuning test, we are hitting some really great notes on this whistle. It's pretty balanced throughout. Um, I think as well on the decibel side of things, it's not the quietest whistle. It's definitely a whistle that you could use to play for sessions. Um, it's got a good range of volume as well, but it's kind of sweet sounding. So when you're playing, it doesn't really have that shrill piercing effect that some whistles have, which kind of makes them seem much louder than they actually are. So I don't think I'd really have any problems playing this um, at home. I don't think it would be too disturbing to the neighbors, but it's not a quiet whistle. Uh, it's just not a shrill whistle, so it doesn't sound too bad.
few observations on the whistle. I haven't noticed it really clogging at all since I've been playing it, which is really nice. Um, it's quite comfortable in the mouth. The mouthpiece shape is a little bit like Sasato whistles though, so if you've played those and you don't quite like that shorter, stubbier mouthpiece, then this might not be the whistle for you. It's quite heavy as far as whistles go because um, the bore is quite thick. I really like the extra weight in a whistle. Um, but I know some people don't, so that might be something to consider. It is a little heavier than other high D whistles I own. The tuning slide I think is really nice. Um, again, obviously as it's a tunable whistle, it will need a little bit of care. Um, you will need to sort of oil that tuning slide somewhat to keep it slick and movable, but um, I think it's really useful to have tunable whistles, especially if you're playing with other instruments, because you can fine-tune your whistle as it warms up as you play it to match in with the, the other instruments or other instrumentalists and other musicians you're playing along with. It's not slippery as far as whistles go, but I would imagine as this is a brand new whistle and it is brass, it will get that patina on it after a few uses. Um, I can already see that where my fingers have been around the holes, it's a lot shinier and I've not really played this whistle all that much yet, so it is pretty new. So it's definitely going to have that um, dusky look to it before long. Now I mentioned earlier some notes about the voice of this whistle. Um, it's quite clear, clean and pure, and I really like that. Um, it's got quite a flute-like sound to it, which I really appreciate. Some whistles have a lot more chiff, which is that gravelly sound to the voice, and this whistle doesn't have that, which I really like. Um, it's very responsive. It's easy to push into the higher notes. It doesn't use a lot of breath though either, so when you're playing you don't find yourself running out of breath. Again, all plus points for me. It's a little louder than I think um, my usual preferences for whistles, but I actually really love it, which is kind of unexpected for me to like a loud whistle. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Now the retail price for these is currently around £80 on the Big Whistle website, so if you did want to go and find out more information, do head over and click that link in the description down below. It's not an affiliate link, it just goes to the website. I don't make any money from this. Um, I just get sent free whistles from Big Whistle to try out and show you folks, which I think is really great. So that is it from me today on this impressive little whistle. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got questions, comments, or suggestions of other whistles you'd like me to review, please do leave them in the comments section down below. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video, and please don't forget to subscribe because um, I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. If you're interested to see some of the other whistles I've already reviewed, you'll find a selection here on screen, alongside the tunes that I played today, which were The Rattling Bog, and a little extract from Baldur's Gate 3. You'll find tutorials for those up here on screen as well. Thank you so much for watching, happy whistling, and I'll see you folks again really soon. Bye!